Hello, this is David, and I'm working on my Roblin X31 again, doing a few little improvements, and today I'm working on extending out the sliding table and putting a telescoping support under, under it. Uh, I've been wanting to do that for a long, long time. Routinely, I ran just a support underneath the main sliding table one or two of them out here, or if I had a, a bunch of big sheets to run, I'd, I'd put a, a big long support outside the table itself. And all that always gets in the way. So I'm looking forward to getting rid of all of that and having a real support coming off the side of the machine. I've already installed the extension off the sliding table using 30 millimeter by 60 millimeter extrusion. As for the rest of it, I got everything else laid out on the workbench. I'll go over it here real quick and then I'll get on to the build. So here are the build components. Now a lot of this stuff I'm reusing what I just happen to have on hand in the barn. Uh, like the main plate that's going to go across the base of the machine on the back side. I got a piece of 8 inch by half inch uh, bar stock. This to say you don't need something half inch thick, but it's what I actually had in, in the shop, so that's what I'm using. Same thing, I got some quarter inch plate for the top and bottom pieces. So there's your back base plate. And then you have the two pieces that are going to hold the pivot shaft. I got to cut those out. There's your shaft right there, three quarters of an inch. Got a shaft coupler there. There's your thrust, there's your bottom thrust bearing, and then your bearings that go on, that go inside the tube. For the rollers, being that I don't have availability of Roblin's rollers, which actually have a piece that comes up the side of each one of the rollers that keeps the uh, tube centered we're just going I'm just using bearings on a shoulder bolt this piece of plastic here I want to end up cutting a little eighth inch uh, wide pieces off of it they're going to end up keep keeping these bearings to stand keeping these bearings to stand off from the wall of the uh, tube Now originally, I was going to take that piece of bar stock there and have that machined. I had it all drawn up and everything. Unfortunately, out here where I live, it was pretty remote. And trying to get somebody to machine it has been a, a hard time. I'd have to go three towns over to find somebody to do it. And even then, uh, it may be months before I get it back. So I ended up taking a piece of two inch and I, that's within nine thousandths of what the OD of that bearing is. I just took a flapper wheel like such and went inside there and worked it out to where it fits the bearing. Alrighty, so this is warm from grinding, so it's expanded a little bit, so when it cools off it won't fit as easy in there. So there it bottoms out, flush with the top, and it's all squared up. Since my mounting plate, the backing plate that these uh, pieces are going to weld to is so thick, it's a half inch, I'm going to forego adding this strip all the way down, going down the top and the bottom of it for rigidity because I don't think that half inch plate's ever going to twist or give on it, give on it. So rather than wait for my 
new regulator to come in to be able to cut all that. I'm just going to go ahead and cut this off right here and just use the little smaller pieces so I can go ahead and mount that, uh, that pivot point. Alright, this is a three quarter bit. I just put it on the grinder and sharpened it a little bit because it was chipped. Looks like I might have done a halfway decent job. We'll see. So I got the hub, axle, however you want to call it, mounted. And I was just checking run out from top from top to bottom on it. And it's the same all the way. Uh, start out at zero here, it'll push out the four thousandths on this one side, and then back to zero. And it's the same way whether I do it up here on the top or on the bottom or the middle. So all it's doing is pushing out the arm and bringing it back in, straight back in. What I didn't want to have is, is be zero here on the bottom and then running out the five thousandths or more up on top. So essentially you're dropping and raising the, the, the arm. All this is going to be doing is pushing the arm out straight horizontally back in again. Really, really no issue there. So, so I'm good with that. That's about as close as you can expect something that's not machined, uh, an extruded piece of tubing. So that's actually really, really good. I'm really actually lucky in that regard. I put the uh, axle sleeves on here. I'm going to use this to attach the arm with so I don't have to weld on this hub because it's rather thin and I don't want to distort it. So. to cut down this gusset a little bit. Show you how it goes together. You got two, two bronze oil impregnated thrust bearings. I did have to take these onto a file and mill them down just a little bit with a file to fit them up so that everything was snug but not too tight. You got a top and bottom thrust bearing. You really only need a bottom one but I put top and bottom just to make it uh, roll a little better. Of course, your three-quarter inch axle shaft, two collars, two stop collars, and then I put the uh, axle collars on the uh, hub, and you got the bearings in each end, fitted flush on each end, right there. Now, the whole thing about this was getting it fitted up so that it didn't have any slop in it, but yet still turned real nice and easy. So, putting it together.
cross bearing goes on first. Your shaft has got a nice bevel on it, so it makes it easy to get it through the, the bottom hole and your bottom your thrust bearings and everything. So you just take your finger, push back, get this started here, push it on through. I got my shaft where I need it. I'm gonna stick my other thrust bearing in. And I'm going to catch it with my finger so I line it up with the hole and get the shaft started. And there it goes right on through. It's where it needs to be. Snug that up so it doesn't go anywhere. So now, now you'll notice you have no slack top to bottom, rocking, or anywhere. It's just free movement so that's going to work well all right well, it's time to mount the uh, bracket onto the machine I got the machine all leveled up tables level so I'll put this on level onto the machine itself so there we go
just with a bunch of uh, 51 and a half inches clearance from the front of the blade to the blade all the way up. <laughs> I thought I'd just give a quick summary of the table support. So it's a sliding support made out of 8 inch by 2 inch rectangle tubing, 11 gauge, 120 thousandths fall, a 4 inch by inch and a half tubing is 11 gauge also, 120 thousandths wall. At first I thought that was really going to be too heavy, I couldn't find anything any thinner, but I'm glad I went with this in the long run because I think it, it really needs it being as long, it's almost six feet long. And everything's worked out fine. I did have to put 25 thousandths shim on the top of the plate to make it to where it, it took any, any dip out of this so it stays level all the way through the run. But uh, everything works fine. Not hard to push. I'm happy with it. I wish I'd had this a long time ago. Alrighty, thanks for watching. Have a good day.